This is my week six video log for my independent study. This week I implemented basic collision detection. Um, if we pull up my example setup, oh, this is the wrong, this is the wrong one. Let's go down here to spectacle.cpp. If we go to the start collision test. So you'll see here that I've added a new collider manager and I can now assign a collider component to uh, to entities. Um, a collider component is would be in theory anything like a sphere collider, an AABB collider, an oriented bounding box collider, a mesh collider, um, any kind of collision primitive that I would that I want to implement and support in gunship right now I only support sphere colliders that would be centered around whatever the pivot point is for that um, object so it would be determined by the transform component um, right now my collision test is I create two collidable components and I place them in the scene um, they each have a, a collision radius of one uh, one unit um, and right now they're set to be just a little bit closer than one unit apart. So if we hit run, um, you see that they're kind of overlapping a little bit. And if I hit the tilde key, that prints out some debug output. And you'll see that over here we have one collision taking place. And if I move this over a little bit, so it's like 1.5. Give this a second to compile and then run. Do the same thing, print out some debug output. Uh oh, we've got one collision being detected. Oh, you know why? I bet that is. Um, they both have a radius of one, so up to two units apart they'll collide. Um, so I didn't actually make the radius. The other, the, the, it's not an actual bounding sphere, it's not calculated based off the mesh. It's um it's user inputted, so you you can configure the radius. So actually, what I could do is, for each of these, I could do. Um, if we do dot radius equals zero point five f. So what's happening here is, the collider manager dot assign returns a reference to the, uh the sphere collider that was added to the entity and if we set the radius to half a unit which now means the uh, this the sphere collider should actually match the size of the mesh that's displayed on screen if we run that it should now say no collisions are taking place so yeah so now the sphere should be basically this the square that you're seeing on the screen so should circumscribe the sphere collider we run it yeah we'll see that zero collisions are taking place um, so if we want to take a look at that code that I added um, so on top of the so I added I've got two new header files here I've got the collider component and that contains our collider manager um, the collider manager currently only supports a sphere collider and eventually I will hopefully add I, I could in theory add support for stuff other than a sphere collider that won't be happening this quarter but eventually if I kept working on gunship I would want to do that to be able to actually make games with it um, a sphere collider this uh, collider manager works the same as just about all the component managers you just so you can associate one uh, collider component with any entity um, eventually that'll that would all probably be changed as well and I'd, I'd want to do a little bit more work with the sphere collider so that instead of being centered at the the position of the object you could add an offset to it as well and then use multiple colliders on a single entity to be composed into a a more complex collidable shape that's further down the line i don't think i'll bother with that this quarter because that's not the most complex issue that needs to be dealt with um the more interesting thing that i want to talk about is here in collision.h um this is a second component manager and this is a collision manager and this contains this collision data component and I'm calling it a component 
Now I'm treating it like a component manager. So it's inheriting from the, the component manager base class, but it's not really a component in the, um, in the, the strictest sense. Um, in the way that say a transform component is associated with a single entity and it's attached to that one entity and that's and that entity has one transform it's sort of a it's a one-to-one -one relationship um, the collision manager is actually or each collision component is associated with two entities the two that have been collided with and if we take a look in systems um, I used to only have alarm system. Now I've got collision system. And if I go into the source files and I go to collision system.cpp, um, this is my system that gets run every frame and does pairwise collisions between all of the, uh, the, the colliders in the scene. Um, and then what it does right now, I don't have any collision layers. So it just all colliders collide with all other colliders. So I just got a nested for loop and it just iterates over the colliders. And you'll see what's going on here is if we detect a collision, we add a new component to the collision manager. And at the beginning of each update, we clear out the old co collisions. So each frame, the collision manager is going to have collision data for any of the components that need to be, or any, it'll, it'll have a list of all the pairs of entities that have collided with each other. And then if I want to do anything from the gameplay side, if I want to dispatch any, if I want to say, have a callback that gets run when a specific entity gets, uh, experiences a collision, I could create a separate manager where you, an entity can register a callback and then it, like a, like an on collision callback. And then every frame that a system associated with that component manager could run and do a callback uh, and do do the associated callback, and that's how you'd get kind of on collision uh, gameplay behaviors. Um, this was the most expedient system I could think of. It was very quick to do, and um, it kind of fits along with Gunship, where I've got like a separation of uh, of code and data, and all the data is stacked into components, and anything that needs to be associated with entities is a component, and any data or any uh, code that needs to get run every frame is a system. However, I'm not sure how practical this is from a gameplay programming perspective. Um, I could see this getting clunky to use depending on how much of the work is handled by um, Gunship versus how much is pushed off to the gameplay side to make game like a game-specific collision handling system. Um, I'm not really going to worry about that, I think, for this quarter. like. Um, mostly just because I wouldn't really be able to determine what the optimal API is without trying to make a game. And since I'm not making a game in this class, I'm just making the engine. It's anything I do is really going to just be based on conjecture. Um, the closest thing I'm going to get to being able to really test the, uh, the usage of the collision system is when I'm writing the tests, the, 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 the benchmarking tests later on. Um, in a couple weeks, I'll be I'll just put together some benchmarks to see to do the comparisons between P2 and Gunship, and to really stress test the collision system and find where the bottlenecks are. And at that point, I'll kind of be using the collision system from the, in the same way that a gameplay programmer would. Though, of course, it's not really going to be an actual game development scenario, so it won't be a completely uh, realistic assessment. Um, well, that's what I completed for this week. Um, next week, I think I'll be implementing collision layers. So being able to say, um, all the, you, you'd be able to associate effectively, uh, a type with, uh, a, a, a col each collider. You could say this collider is the player layer and, uh, this other collider is on the bullet layer and bullets, col anything on the bullet layer collides with anything on the player layer, but things on the bullet layer don't collide with other things on the bullet layer and, and that sort of thing. Um, that would, that achieves the same effect as that, uh, the collision pair management in P2 and in, uh, in an, uh, teal. Um, but it's going to, I'm going to implement it in more of a layer rather, since I don't have the type association that, or the, it's not object oriented in the same way that, uh, the P2 and teal were. Um, I don't, I can't just do that like templated pairwise collision. I've got a, I'm going to try 
something else. I'm not really 100% sure what I'm going to go with at this point, and that'll be interesting to experiment with and see what I come up with. Um, but after that's done, I think I'll just kind of call it there for features, and I'll start working on profiling because I expect it's going to take quite a bit of work to really get this to be optimal, and I'm gonna have to, it's going to take a lot of work to get uh, P2 up to snuff in, its, in terms of its collision system. Um, all right, I will see you next week.